Welcome, everyone, to the Retire Young podcast. And this is the podcast where we talk about financial literacy or lack thereof. We're raising awareness to financial illiteracy. And we also talk about the financial markets, how they work, and different ways that you can upgrade your lifestyle. And today, I have a special guest with me, uh, Tim Pessett, professional instructor. You you do some uh, Forex trading, futures trading, options trading. Correct. Uh, pretty much everything, right? Yeah, the whole ball. <laughs> not, not really stocks, because once folks get into options, they realize that their money, they have better utilization of their money with options, but yeah. you still have the underlying stuff. Got it. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm doing great. Good. It's great. To have, I'm doing really good. It's, it's a beautiful, cold day in the office. It's really cold. <laughs> Um, before we get into these financial markets, we've had a wild week this week, especially in the equities markets. I mean, we had some pretty big down days. I mean, thousand point days. Huge. But um, I just want to ask you a couple of questions as far as like a lot of people that are looking to get into the financial markets, they don't really know where to start or how to start. Right. For, uh, first off, how did you get started? And then how are you helping other people get started as well? So something I'd always looked at since I lived on the south side of Chicago, it was always about all these different traders on south the Merck. South side of Chicago, huh? Yeah, on the Merck, Board of Trade, Chicago Board's Option Exchange. And I just had an interest from high school. Mm -hmm. Went to college. Then my grandmother passed away, left us each some stock. Was fortunate. Lehman Brothers broker actually helped sell the estate. Mm -hmm. And he kind of took me under his wing and showed me kind of the market from his perspective. Sure. And then I later on uh, did well with what he was showing me, and markets were really great. When, when was this again? Late, Late 80s. 80s. Okay. So things were Got taken it. off. Yep. And then he had just said, you're good at what I'm showing you. Have you thought about doing this full time? I said, no, never occurred to me because – didn't have the Ivy League education, did not have the big money. To <laughs> and be a lot of get people think that. that you need that to be a trader or investor, don't they? I mean, well, you, they gotta, do. you have to have a degree for everything, a master's. Correct. And it's just the opposite. Some of the best traders bear, just have a high school education. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how that is because a lot of people like, you know, don't know how to start, but they are reluctant to because they think you got to be a genius. You gotta they think you have to have a lot of right. money as well. Um, they also think you have to be glued to your computer screen, and you're uh, you do a lot of uh, forex and futures trading and, and options. Explain a little bit about leverage because you can use smaller amount of, of money, not like the stock right. market where you actually need a, a big pot of money to generate because you ha you need the buying power. Explain what the leverage is and why someone can be comfortable utilizing that if you're properly protected. Okay, so leverage is very misunderstood because generally the financial industry paints it as a negative. Yeah. Oh, if you use leverage, you're going to get wiped out. It, you know, it goes up fast and it goes against you fast. That's true because you're putting in a smaller amount of money to control a larger sum of money. Mm -hmm. Now, how we take that double-edged sword off is if you always use a stop, now you control leverage going against you. That's your protection. Total protection. Mm -hmm. Leverage also allows me to be more diversified. So especially if I have a smaller account, well, if I'm in equities, I'm going to have to have a fairly good size account to be diversified. Mm -hmm. With futures and forex, let's start options. Options is going to give me ten to one leverage. Okay. So let's just say, and I haven't looked at the, the equity market today, but let's just say the S and P is at at three hundred dollars a share mm -hmm. ETF. Yep, that's PY. And if I want a hundred shares of the SPY, that's thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a lot of capital to mm -hmm. tie up. If I want to participate in the market movement, I could do the futures version. Now that's twenty to one leverage. So instead of me needing thirty thousand because of leverage, intraday, if I'm going to be in the day, I'm only going to need about twelve fifty to control that position. Okay, that's a big difference. Huge difference. So think of it as a deposit amount. Yeah. Utilizing my stop intraday, my worst case scenario is whatever I decided is. If I'm going to risk $150, $200, that's my risk. Even though markets are falling like crazy, mm -hmm. my risk is contained by my stop while the markets are open. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because, the, especially this week, a lot of people have, you know, that have are participating in the markets just a buy and hold strategy. Right. Probably lost, I think. What was it, 10% has gone down so far since the top? They've lost 10%. So they're back to where they were last August, yeah. October. Yeah, wiped out all those gains. All the gains and, and in five days. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that amazing? It took, what, uh, that long to get up there, and then it drops mm -hmm. that fast. But it's it's 
you know, it, it, do you think there's a lot of fear in the market right now, or do you think people are still thinking it's going to come back? What is the perception of the average investor, I should say? I think the fear is starting to come in, and a lot of it, because this is kind of a, I'm going to call it a black swan event, people are understanding the coronavirus. Yeah. Not so much, Not it's interesting, not so much from a health standpoint. I think there's that concern, but most of the focus is, okay, people are staying in, staying home, things aren't being produced. Airlines are not flying everywhere. Business is slowing down for them. Exactly, and it appears a lot of companies operate on really small margins. Yeah. And it, and it kind of tipped me off last Tuesday. So last yeah. Tuesday, I just caught a blurb that it was uh, Carnival. I think it was Carnival, or maybe it was Princess. It doesn't matter. One of the cruise lines mm-hmm. who have cruises in the China area were going to cancel three cruises. Wow. They're going to lose, on average, two to three million. And because they were going to cancel three, they were going to report flat earnings. So it got me to think, oh, my gosh, they've got to do 1,000-plus cruises a year. And because you don't do three, only three. That tells me just how extended and how thin the margins are. That's amazing. If they do that many and that much, just a couple, how that can really dramatically impact their. It's amazing earnings. and scary. It is, yeah. Because then it makes you wonder who else has thin margins because of global competition, mm-hmm. and then you potentially have a domino effect. It is. It's just going to keep going down. And is this is this the the start of it? I mean, who knows. It really doesn't matter because when you have a strategy that you can, you know, utilize to profit in any condition, it doesn't matter. Correct. And that's shorting the market. I mean, the, everybody didn't lose money in this past week. They're, oh, no. It's a, actually, you should just think of it as a huge opportunity. Some folks made at least 5 to 8% in the past five days. Yeah, and p- people don't know that you can do that. Explain what shorting is and how you can do that and, and have that in part of your strategy so you can take part in any, any market condition. So probably the easiest way to look at it is, Shorting, and I know this is just kind of trite, is just the opposite of going long. <laughs> it's really true, yeah. <laughs> but most of us can't grasp that. Mm-hmm. How can I make money when something goes down? In the financial markets, you just have to accept the words, because you can. Yeah, All go. that means is when I'm in my company's 401k, 403b, or I buy a stock, buy a house, I'm looking to get in at a good price and later on down the road, sell it for a capital gain. Okay, what if I could do the same thing where I think something's overpriced, it's way overpriced, it's got a fall in price, Mm -hmm. and many of us do this when we buy things. We wait for a sale. Yeah. In essence, we're going short. Mm -hmm. So the only difference is you're selling first, you're buying second. Now, if you can stop thinking right there, you're okay. But here's what a lot of us do. We're like, well, I can't do that. That's illegal. How can I buy something <laughs> I don't have? Yeah. And I always say in the financial markets, because you can. Yeah. So tell me where else, anywhere else on the planet, could you sell something first, drops in value, you buy it back, and you make money. Don't because know. all we're doing when we make capital gains is we're buying something first, selling it second. Yep. Now, and if you can relate to that, okay, it's just a flip. You've got a whole world of opportunity. It is. And it's just price action on a chart. Correct. You know, a good thing you can do, and I just thought of this, flip your computer over. Then you're Correct. buying. Then it looks like yes, you're buying. You exactly. <laughs> to, to make it simple. But, you know. No, it's, that's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're here uh, doing a, a Forex class for right. our, and all our students here. And a lot of people are, you know, are brand new to that market. And it's the, actually the biggest market out there. It is. And most people don't know. A lot of people, everybody knows the stock market. Well, you have the futures market, the, uh, the Forex market that's roughly, is it around $5 trillion per day traded roughly? Yeah. And last year, we hit 6.5. Oh, it was. Okay. So it took a big jump last year. Got it. Yeah. So, I mean, when you're helping people start that process in the currency market, the Forex market, right? Um, it's new to most people. It how, is. How do you get them to be comfortable with it? You have the opportunity to be in the same position as your bank. Okay. So most people say, I'd love to be in the same opportunity as my bank. <laughs> banks are always, banks making are always making money. Now, interesting. So equity markets are going down. Futures of markets going down. There are many currencies. For those that are a little shy at first, they're used to going long, buy it, sell to a higher, higher price. 
there's many currencies over the past five days that have moved up just as much as the equity market has dropped. It's a hedge then. Total hedge. Yeah. Now, as I get into it, in the currency market, just think of it, that's the bank's market. That's just money. But we get this mystique. Oh, the euro is one currency, the Thai bought something else, and then we start to get confused. Well, I have to do that conversion. And the beauty in the currency market, the conversion on your platform is all done for you. So you don't even have to go that route. Mm -hmm. Much like anything else, goes up, you can make money. Goes down, you can make money. The currency market has a wider range throughout the day, which gives us bigger opportunities. Sure. Got it. That's amazing. Though I appreciate you coming on the Retire Young podcast. And, you know, we, we try to get you in Minneapolis here as many times as we can. Do you still live in Chicago? No, actually, I got tired of the weather, especially when it snows a foot in April. <laughs> so I went to Florida because it's nice and sunny and no personal income tax. Got, oh, there you go. There you go. Exactly. And, uh, you know, you came here. It's, it's tough to get you to come in the wintertime, isn't it? Well, it's not exactly my favorite spot just from the wind chill. Mm-hmm. But it's, I like the students. I like to share what I do because I think for all of us, understanding how the banks make money. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in history, we were allowed to get into their market. That was TEFRA, by the way, of 2002. Okay. So as a U.S. citizen, I was never exposed, could never access the currency market. Mm -hmm. And so now we can, and it can make a big difference in your overall portfolio. And it's all about just having a better life. I mean, whether it's you're in your income years or in retirement, it's, it's utilizing the markets to upgrade that lifestyle. And that's why we're raising awareness to financial illiteracy here on the Retire Young Podcast. So I appreciate you coming on. It's My always pleasure. it's always great having great knowledge coming in here and uh, kind of spreading that and helping other people be comfortable and confident utilizing these markets. So I appreciate you coming on. All right. Thanks for thanks having coming me. in. All right.